G'day guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean and today we're looking at the Elgato Facecam Pro. It's a 4K 60 frame a second webcam that doesn't include a microphone. It costs 499 Australian dollars, but it might be the simplest and easiest way to upgrade your content without having to buy a DSLR. So today we're gonna to get it out of the box. And I mean, I've already kind of done that. We're gonna do some comparisons. And at the end of the video, I'll share with you guys my thoughts and opinions on whether or not this product is worth it. So if you have any questions at all about the product or anything I've talked about, let me know in the video comments down below. Links to everything is down in the description and let's begin. All right, so let's look inside the box of what possibly could be the most expensive USB webcam without a microphone. So getting this out of the box, on first impressions, it was packaged really, really nicely. Up the top, you've got your Facecam Pro in that nice little bag, protected from any scratches. And then down the bottom, you've got two little guides here. So the first one is your Facecam Pro quick start guide so to show you how to get it connected, how to get it set up, telling you about all of the specs and details, system requirements. And then you've also got down here this little booklet explaining, you know, things like safety precautions and telling you all about the warranty. And so the next thing that we have is that USB cable. It's a six foot or 1.8 meter USB type C to type C cable. It's actually fairly thick and it's not a super fragile cable. I would have liked it if this cable was actually braided, but the fact that you're just gonna plug this in maybe once and leave it alone, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but it is a fairly thick and chunky cable. And I assume that's because there is a lot of copper wires inside this thing providing data and also power. And now the next thing is the actual mount for the camera. So you can go ahead and put the camera on top of your monitor or on top of your laptop stand. But this thing is basically made completely out of plastic. It's soft plastic. And then you've got a quarter inch thread there that basically goes into the bottom of the camera itself. So very similar to what you get with a lot of webcams. It works perfectly fine. It does the job and it keeps the camera steady and in place. Now getting the camera out of the box, I was genuinely very, very excited. It does feel like a very premium product. And on first impressions, pulling it out of the bag, it actually looks really, really nice. That textured face on the front surrounding the lens with a LED indicator to the left to tell you when it's on and then some text on the right to tell you about the lens. I think this is just a really nice design. We have a matte plastic body for the front half and then a metal heat sink at the back, which is where your USB Type-C connection is for actually plugging the camera in but then also doubles as a bit of a heat sink to dissipate some of that heat. You've got a quarter inch thread on the bottom for your stand, a reset button if you want to reset the settings of the camera but overall that lens being about 21 mil f 2.0 really nice design doesn't weigh too much it's a really nice looking camera and I think it's probably one of the nicest webcams that I've ever seen. Okay, so on the screen, we've got three different cameras at three different price points, and I'm purposely not going to look at the cameras so you know which one is which. We've got the Logitech Brio running at 4K30 for $299. We've got the Elgato Facecam Pro running at 4K60 for $499. And then we've got a DSLR. We've got a Sony ZV-E10 running at 4K25. And when you factor in a capture card, a dummy battery, a mini HDMI cable, a power adapter, you're looking at about $1,300. So which camera do you actually think looks best? Rate them one to three and maybe let me know in the comments. So starting off with the most expensive camera, this is the Sony ZV-E10. It's a really nice looking camera. It can function as many things. You know, you can take it places, you can travel with it, you can vlog with it, you can do content creation, but it's also a bit more of a complicated setup. So if you're going to be deploying this in maybe a classroom or a meeting room, I probably would advise against it because most people are going to be a little bit too intimidated because they won't necessarily know how to set it up and how to actually get it working. But for me, in my bedroom, the fact that I know how to operate it and set it all up, it makes a lot of sense because I can use this for traveling and doing a whole bunch of other things. That's the advantage of getting a DSLR camera. It looks really nice. It captures my skin, the color of the room, the texture, the detail and everything really well. Like I've got fairly oily skin as well and it shows that up without any issues, but it's a really nice looking camera, but it costs a lot of money. If we jump down to the Elgato, so now this is the Elgato Facecam Pro, 4K60, it's one cable, plug and play, really easy to use. You could put it in a meeting room, a classroom, even if you're someone who's just getting into content creation and you wanna actually have a really good camera from basically day one, this is as good as it gets. It's $500, which might seem like a lot of money for something that is basically, you know, 
only going to function as a webcam, but the fact that you can easily travel with it as well, like if you're doing podcasts, if you're needing to take it to someone's uh, house or maybe a business or whatever it might be, I think for $500, it's actually not a bad deal when you consider the fact that this image quality anyway is really, really decent. The motion, the details, the color, the depth of everything, it's a really nice product and I can see Elgato being really, really successful. Now, if we jump down to a Logitech Brio, this is a $300 webcam and this camera come out a couple years ago. It can only go up to 4K 30. It can do 1080p 60. It does support HDR, which is not that great, um, but it does, I think, have a place in the market. I know, I know a lot of people who still use this camera and in the right lighting and in the right scenario, it actually can be a perfectly fine camera for content creation or Zoom meetings or whatever it might be. But if you're already spending about $300, I think that it's probably better to go to the Elgato because you're going to be getting that much better video quality. Like it is a substantial jump. And if you're thinking, okay, well, I don't want to spend 300 and I don't want to spend 500. There are a lot of other cameras cameras that cost less than 300 that produce a really clean image like the C920 is a good one even the Microsoft Essentials webcam is a really good camera as well but if you're taking content creation seriously remember this is uh, a camera that is going to be aimed at a specific target that could be you someone who's wanting to make a passive income or a side hustle through video content then i think this is a really good camera and i think elgato is going to be really successful now the Elgato Facecam Pro, I'm really happy to say, has really decent software to manage all of the different settings. So this program that you're seeing on screen at the moment, this is called Elgato's Camera Hub. It's a free download from their website. And within this program, you know, you can adjust the zoom, the field of view, you can change the focus from automatic to manual. You can adjust contrast and saturation. You know, you might need to do that depending on the room that you're in and the lighting situation. Uh, same goes with exposure and white balance. You can play around and change all these different settings on on the fly and once you're done um, obviously we'll just revert it back to defaults but you can actually save it to the onboard memory of the camera which means if you're unplugging it and plugging it back in at a later stage maybe somewhere different all the changes you've made to the camera are actually going to be stored within the camera itself which means you don't need to install and configure the program at another pc at another location later on it's all just saved with the onboard memory which is just awesome and then jumping over to the effects tab, if you've got a PC with NVIDIA RTX graphics or an Apple uh, PC with M1 or M2 silicon, you can actually add things like a blurred background. If you want to go ahead and add a green screen, you can go ahead and do that. Or maybe a, you know, scenario where you're doing a fake broadcast, like from a newsroom or whatever it is, you know, you can just play around with all the different effects there, um, or you can just turn it off. And even with the blur, actually, you can go ahead and increase how aggressive that blur is so there's a whole bunch of cool effects you can play around with providing that your pc supports it but the fact that you can go ahead and play around with all these settings within the software it's really easy to use i'm so happy to see now would i actually recommend the elgato facecam pro to you guys it's one of those situations where I don't like to finish a video by saying it depends. I personally don't even like watching videos when the person says it depends. But I think in this scenario, it actually does depend on what you're doing. Like if you're a content creator, a professional, maybe you're a teacher and you're getting paid for the information that you're publishing and putting out via entertainment or educational, whatever it is, then I actually think it does make sense to pay the extra money and get yourself a camera that can show you as clearly as possible with really good color accuracy, super simple to set up and you don't need to fuss around with a lot of different you know, settings like you would on a DSLR camera. If you're that person though, who is maybe just starting out and you're getting into Twitch streaming or YouTube streaming or Facebook streaming, whatever it is that you're doing and you've never done it before, then I would probably say hold off a little bit, maybe play around with using your phone as a camera or getting a cheaper webcam to actually see what needs to be improved because Getting this camera does not mean that your setup is going to just look 10 times better. You still need to have decent lighting. You still need to have um, some consideration for the lighting in the room. It's not going to do everything. So hope that helps uh, answer the question. For me personally, am I going to continue using this camera? 
Probably not, and that's only because I've already made this investment with my DSLR and I like the way that that looks and it helps me keep the quality of everything very, very consistent. But if I didn't personally have a DSLR and I only had the Logitech Brio and I wanted an upgrade, it's definitely worth the money to actually upgrade to something like the Elgato Facecam Pro. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope that that conclusion does make sense and you actually understand where I'm coming from. If it did help you, don't forget to chuck it a like. If you have any comments or questions or thoughts, maybe let me know in the comment section. If you enjoyed the content and you want to see more, don't forget to get subscribed, maybe check out my socials. Links to everything is down in the video description as well, and I'll see you guys in the next video.